Andy and me drove down to the Lizard once again on our eighth walking day on our two-week trip. We drove across Goonhilly Downs with its memorable Earth Station, a wild and windswept place. Andy and me set off northwards from Coverack on a lowland walk to Lowland Point. We walked along a raised beach, which I enjoyed very much, and it was easy. In time, we started to see big bites taken out of the inland hillsides, and these were the quarries. The first one we came to, Dean Quarry, now disused, and the strange industrial dereliction of this spot was quite inspirational. In fact, we met a fellow walker, a lone woman, who was wandering along, seeking inspiration for her work. We liked her a lot. We moved on. In time, we reached the little village of Porthousedock. I'm sure I've not pronounced that correctly, but we stopped by the old uh, lifeboat station and enjoyed our morning coffee. Andy pondered at some length the difficulty of charging or electric vehicles in such remote locations. Further quarries lay ahead and we rounded those too before we turned back towards the shore down a lovely lane, uh, gently sloping, with beautiful orchards with unreasonably red apples in them uh, as we headed down towards the village of Praller, or Porthallow as I kept on calling it and still will. This was to be a memorable, memorable few moments in our mighty 630 mile adventure. So the both of us spent some little time near the marker stone. 315 miles walked, 315 still to go. A poem on one side and mention of the flora and fauna on the other, both charming in their own way. However, once again, on a display of some kind, a total lack of respect for the bedrock geology, which shape, fashions and forms and underpins the whole of this fantastic coastline. But that's a minor criticism. This was a glorious place to be, and Andy and I had our spirits lifted by the feeling of accomplishment that comes with doing half of our massive adventure together. That's Falmouth in the distance, our objective for tomorrow. And we've just walked through and stopped a while at Porthallo, which is on the official guides and measurements, 315 miles from Minehead and 315 miles to South Haven Point, Studland on Poole Harbour. So we have now walked half of the mighty SWCP continuously from Minehead. So Somerset, North Devon, North Cornwall, West Cornwall, and we're heading into the area of South Cornwall. Um, it feels monumental, to be honest, uh, as an achievement. It's just a series of walks day by day, but it feels like a hell of an undertaking and feel quite proud of myself and also of Andy to have gone this far. Uh, I'm feeling bloody chuffed with myself. Really, really chuffed. Uh, 315 miles continuous walking from Minehead. We've just passed the marker and I'll send some photographs to, to show you what it looked like. Um, pretty, pretty monumental moment, to be honest. Uh, it gives you an idea of the immensity of this, this, this challenge. And uh, even though we've done half, we've still got 315, or a little bit less now, to do. So I'm looking back at Porth Hallow. It's tucked behind me in that cove. Uh, charming little place, as many of these are, with a brilliantly named pub, the Five Pilchards. Uh, Cornish uh, main economy uh, with tin until both of them collapsed uh, at the end of the 19th century and early 20th century. It's, uh, it's, it is a magical place. Uh, I love it very much. And as I've repeatedly said, I commend doing this to anybody. You don't have to be super fit, I'm certainly not. You just have to be determined and, and put up with some tough days. Uh, but even the tough days are better than a day in the office, as they say. We were detoured inland again after Prada, this time due to coastal erosion. And most of the rest of, the, of our walk was over relatively easy ground. Although, as I entered the village of Gillen on the south side of the um, Gillen Creek, I had an unfortunate incident with a low-hanging tree branch. I bashed my forehead. 
Shortly after that though, an SWCP highlight for both of us. Absolutely awesome. Uh, on foot, tramping across a little creek, Gillen Creek. I always said the deep purple will never let me down and they haven't. This is a magical experience. So we've saved ourselves two and a half miles of round walking, going all the way around this little creek. And uh, I'm glad we risked it because this is, this is an SWCP highlight. So the splashes of me and my, my tootsies. And I'm hoping to, hope to sake I can get across without making a complete and utter titter myself and dropping my phone. But uh, done it, pretty much. I wish I didn't have, I wish I had Emma's feet at times like this. She's uh, got a thick layer of protective skin on the soles of her feet. And mine feel as though I've got no skin at all, just goes straight through to all my bloody nerve endings. And uh, it hurts like hell. There's a bit more water to do and there's some incredible sand ripples here uh, so I'm enjoying those from a geological point of view all in all a top SWCP experience and I tell you what's really nice to walk on is this seaweed down here it's lovely now the rain starts <laughs> marvellous Exhilarated after our crossing of Gillen Creek, we enjoyed the beauty of St. Anthony in Meniage, which is a monk thing apparently, rattled across towards Dennis Head, enjoyed a view and then turned for home, walking up the Helford River on the south bank. This was a bit of a yomp back to the car and there was too much private property for my liking, but it was an enjoyable walk and Daphne du Maurier and Frenchman's Creek was very much in my mind as we finished this fantastic day off. Tomorrow, we cross the Helford River and head for our final destination on this fortnight's walking of Falmouth. So past the halfway marker of our mighty adventure and through a small village with the memorable name of Gillen, which reminded me so much of the band Deep Purple and their former famous front man with his brilliant screaming voice. So today's song for the day had to be a Deep Purple classic, Child in Time.